Welcome to the finale. This shall be the last video on Excel. Depends if there's an OVA, but you never know. Anyways, episode number six on Excel. Recap on last episode. We looked at how to graph a linearized relationship between period and the square root of length of a pendulum. So that was more of a recap. In this video, we're going to look at how to manually set up a maximum and a minimum slope on your graph for Excel to analyze and spit out some values for you. Going back to the lesson, there's a few things I want to go over just to make sure we all are aware of. When you are drawing your maximum and minimum slope, this is kind of what it looks like. Recall that your error bar is kind of like a box. So imagine that your error bars allow your data to have a span. I'm only caring about the top and the bottom. Okay, so how do you do this? To draw your maximum slope, we start from the bottom right-hand corner of your bottom er last error bar, the bottom error bar here. You also use a point on the upper left-hand corner of your top error bar at the very top of your graph. Having these two points, you're allow you are then able to draw a line hopefully through all of your error bars, if possible. If not, then that's unfortunate, that that's just life. Um, but again, uh, you want to try to get it through all through your error bars. You might need to adjust that a little bit when you're actually drawing out yourself, depending if you're able to fit in the, ex the error bar that's down over here. Okay, so that is for the maximum slope, that there's no other possible way to get a maximum slope otherwise. You can try it out yourself a little bit. This is one of the better possibilities. And then drawing your minimum slope. The minimum slope from your bottom error bar, the lowest error bar here, you start from the top left corner as a dip, as one point. And then for your upper error bar, up over here, you start from the bottom right corner. You locate these two points and then you draw your line as best as you could. So this is my min, the other one's my max. But what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially gonna tell Excel, what are these four data points going to be? I will get Excel to draw a, lean, a linear line through these two data points on my graph directly and then analyze it from there. To put in some of these data points, I will have to enter some functions. Okay, a recap on what these could be. For my x value in my slope, in my maximum slope, on my lower end, I have my bottom x. I'm going to call these, actually here, let me give these a name. I'm going to call these x1, y1, and this upper one here, I'm going to call this x2, y2. So to get my one of my data points, the bottom one over here, I need to essentially take x1, and I need to add the horizontal error bar. So I'm actually going to add delta x, whatever delta x is. And the same for the y coordinate, it is y minus the error bar. So I have y1 minus delta y. That's for my lower data point. My upper data point up here for my maximum slope, this is x2 x2 minus my horizontal error bar. And then for y, this is y2 plus my, hor my vertical error bar here. That's for my maximum slope. My minimum slope, I need x1 again, and I'm gonna subtract my horizontal error bar, notice it's behind. And the y value is the y1 plus delta y. The x2, so the upper upper data point for my minimum slope is x2, and x2 I add the delta, I add the uncertainty, delta x2. For my y, this is y2 minus, because it's below, minus delta y2. I'm going to keep this in mind as I'm inputting my functions, it's going to help guide me as I'm entering my data. I'm going to give this a name, so I'm going to make four columns. These two columns are going to be for maximum slope. So I'm going to merge two of these cells together. I can actually show you how to merge a cell. To merge a cell, you select the two cells or the cells that you want to merge. You go up here, home, merge and center, drop down, merge cells. I'm going to do the same thing for here. I'm going to merge these two cells as well. I'm going to call this max slope and this one min slope. These are my x coordinates. These are my y for my max. These are the x and y for my min. I'm going to center both of these in the middle, so don't forget to align them center, center. 
I'm going to color code max with orange to help me see better and minimum as yellow to help me see better. So I'm going to put, this is going to be my x1 for max slope. What I'm going to do is I need to enter a function because I'm adding or subtracting. This is equals to x1, which is my length in my linearized graph, remember, because it's looking at the linear relationship. So this is x1, and I'm going to add delta 1. So I'm going to press, I'm going to click on plus, I'm going to add this guy, and that gives me the x for max slope. To get the y, I need to take the y1, which is my t average divided by 10. I need to subtract, so I'm going to press subtract, my delta y1, which is t average divided by 10 uncertainty, and that gives me the y value. To get my second point for my maximum slope, this is my, I'm gonna use down here, and then I'm going to, this is equals to my length, which is x2. I'm gonna subtract my delta x2, so this is minus, minus the uncertainty in x, which is this guy, enter. For my y, I'm going to, this is equals to y2, which is t average divided by 10, the, the period. And I'm going to add the delta y2. I'm going to add this uncertainty here. That gives me the data point there. That's the point there, not a data point. For the minimum slope, putting in these functions, the x1 equals, x1 is this guy. I need to subtract this time. Subtract delta x1. This is the uncertainty here. Enter. For the y, I'm going to take equals to y, which is my period, period plus delta y1. So I'm going to click on press plus, plus this uncertainty here, enter, first data point, for, sorry, first point. The second point down here is x2, so equals, x2 is the length plus the uncertainty. So I'm going to press plus, plus this guy over here the uncertainty, enter, and then I am going to go to the y equals to, the y is the period here over here, minus delta y, so minus delta y, and here we have it, we have the four points. Alrighty, we're gonna need to now put these four points into our graph. Okay, let's put this into our graph. I'm gonna click on my graph, I am going to add a few things. I'm going to add new data. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to select data. And this is, was my first series that I first entered in here. I'm going to add a new one. I'm actually going to name this max slope so I don't forget what it is. Select my range of x values are these guys. Even if I select blank ones, Excel won't mind. And select my y ones, which are these guys. Go back and OK. Notice they appear on my graph already. There it is. I need to add another one for minimum slope. So I'm going to name it min slope. X values are in this column. The Y values are in the next column. Go back. OK. And OK. And look at the gray dots. The gray dots are for the minimum slope. OK, I need to zoom in because it's very tiny. And yeah, it looks about right. There you go. Now I'm going to use these two data points to make some trend lines. To do that, I need to click on those data points. I'm going to click on the red one for the max series. I click on the, the series itself before I press plus, trend line, options, linear, display equation on the chart. And this one should be the maximum slope. I'm going to put that here. I'm going to put the, uh, the average one over there so I don't confuse it. Now for the minimum. The minimum, I'm going to click on the gray dots. That's my data series. Click on it, then press the plus. Add the trend line, more options. Linear display equation on chart. Ooh, that's a little messy. So maybe I can tweeze them out, hopefully. This should be the lower value. And yes, it is for some reason. That's very interesting. Very interesting how this is actually not lower than the average that it produces in the, uh, the one itself. This is a perfect ex example of where things may not go exactly as you expected. These are those unfamiliar situations. 
typically speaking, before I talk about this unfamiliar situation, generally speaking, this is how you would do max slope and min slope and put it manually into Excel. Now, in this particular situation, what I would do, notice there's interestingly, this minimum slope may not be quite so minimum because it could potentially be a little wider up here where the data point or this gray dot could be a little higher and the line could be a little flatter based on all my data values. This is a perfect example of where using rules does not get you what you're looking for when you're analyzing your data. This is where you can show me your critical thinking skills. Some things where you could do here in the example is you could uh, readjust this gray dot upwards manually to see where you would f the best, the minimum line would best fit your data. So you have to do that yourself a little bit because the set of data is a little bit crooked and different. And of course, when you do that, those are excellent time, excellent pieces of ideas that you want to put into your discussion and talk about how you were analyzing it, how you found all these errors, etc. And of course, max min slope is not the end all be all of analyzing slope uncertainty and the like. There are definitely other statistical methods to do that. And I may leave that challenge up to you to find that one out. Excel actually does one for you, which is the R squared. I might have the name wrong, it's fine. You can look into that one. Those are where I would look into to better analyze this data. But if you just want to do it the easy way, you could readjust those two points to best reflect your data because obviously this value is not looking like the minimum slope at all, according to what Excel does. But for now, this is, I'm just gonna leave it there because I don't have time in the rest of the video to show you exactly what I would do. Maybe I might talk about it later, but uh, the purpose of this video is to get to show you how to do a minimum maximum slope and apply to an unfamiliar situation, of course, haha, <laughs> for your level seven, like six and sevens. <laughs> Because of that, I've taken some time to do that. I may even show you how to properly round all of these in the next video. <laughs> I totally lied. There is going to be an OVA. There's going to be an episode seven or an OVA if you want to call it an OVA. So I will leave it here. Recap. What we did was we looked at how to make a maximum slope and a minimum slope line manually getting Excel to do that for you after looking at a few points yourself. This is the rigid way of doing it. Of course, again, anytime when you're analyzing data a certain way, as long as you justify what you're doing and you're looking at it from a critical thinking perspective, that shows me that you're thinking, you're reflecting, and you're processing your data using higher orders of thinking. So don't be afraid to do that when you think that the rigid methods that I'm showing you, these are the basics, but now you do know how to plot maximum and minimum slope using Excel. As a result, I'm going to see you next time on episode 7, the OVA. Who knows how many OVAs there are going to be? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I will see you on episode 7 on how to finish up, touch up your graph, calculate your unslope uncertainties, etc. Thank you for watching and bearing with me in this video. I hope you got something out of it, and I will see you next time in the OVA, episode 7. Good luck.